Thank you, President Reese. Congratulations, class of 2016, cohorts 1100 through 1238. You are all God's masterpiece. I'm humbled to have the opportunity today on this beautiful Saturday morning. This is the very day that many of you, like me, pictured in the back of your mind as you were sitting down to type a paper or read a book in the quietest corner of the house, sometimes the biggest challenge of all, in order to get your homework done. The vision of this day, this very day, is what got us through the pleading from our friends and family to go outside and do anything, just about anything would be better than sitting down to do homework. Many sacrifices were made. This is the prize that you've all been waiting for. This is what you've worked so hard to achieve. You finally made it, not always on our schedule, but always on God's schedule. Let me say, God is never early, God is never late, God is always right on time. My name is Dan Faris. I finally graduated from Concordia School of Adult Learning, which is an old term, I'm told that was about three generations ago, no longer the School of Adult Learning, which is progress, by the way, and I appreciate that. I was in cohort 194, so yes, that ages me. It was about 18 years ago today that I sat in these chairs, and it was a day I'll never forget. I know what it feels like to be sitting in the rows of chairs we see in front of us today. I also know what it's like to be a full-time student. I know what it's like to be a full-time parent, and I know what it's like to take care of a household full-time. Did you happen to catch the emphasis on full-time? There simply weren't enough hours in the day or days in the week to get everything done. Many times I thought that this very day, this graduation day, would never actually happen. Let me say again, God is never early. God is never late. God is always right on time. Right out of high school, I attended St. Paul Vocational Technical Institute, also a name that's changed several times since then. Used to be known as St. Paul TVI, not sure what they call it today. That's where I earned a two-year degree and soon became a journeyman cabinet maker. I loved it. I still have woodworking as a lifelong hobby today, building projects for friends and family, but mostly I enjoy building things for my two perfect little granddaughters, Addison and Avery. Their mother is out in the audience today. At age 25, I needed to do something more than build cabinets for a living while working for somebody else. I either needed to start my own shop or do something completely different. One day, while insta installing a custom kitchen for Fred Holbeck, a prison warden at the Lionel Lakes facility, he offered me a job working for the Minnesota Department of Corrections in his prison industry program teaching inmates how to build wooden office furniture. Now I can tell you, given the opportunity, all of these guys would leave, so it was difficult to try and capture their attention and actually teach them a trade. My job included selling furniture to state agencies and political subdivisions. I was their first salesperson ever, and I saw many opportunities for improvement, and so, under Fred's mentorship, I quickly realized I wasn't the smartest person in the office and that I needed more education that my vocational certificate that I earned earlier just wasn't able to provide. So I decided to go back to school like many of you. It took me seven years to earn my two-year degree. I hope that's not a, uh, too uh, disparate of a story. Let me say again, God is never early. God is never late. God is always right on time. By this time, I had worked my way into a leadership role as CEO to lead the centralization of prison industries into what is known today as MinCore Industries. I knew that if I really wanted to be all that I could be, and clearly I was still not the smartest one in the office, I decided I needed more education. And on to Concordia's School of Adult Learning I went. 
I had attended class every Wednesday night for 24 months with the same group of cohort students every week. I made lifelong friends and I learned how to learn. Two years later, I finally earned my four-year degree. Again, God is never early, God is never late, God is always right on time. The thing I liked most about Concordia is that I could apply what I learned the night before in class the very next day at work. In fact, midway through my cohort program, I found myself in a position at work where we had to write a business plan to eliminate all state subsidies that were required to run the prison industry program that employed 1,500 inmates full time. Ten different prisons around the state employed these inmates in 23 different business units. It was a diverse model. And yes, license plates were one of the things that we made. So I decided to make this a school project, kill two birds if you will, and write the business plan that we would present to the legislature in competition with a consultant that was hired by the state senate to develop a plan to privatize MinCor. Up until that point, it was part of the Department of Corrections. Dr. Richard Brentison, who's in the audience today, was my cohort professor at the time and mentored me through the entire process, including how to present this project to the legislature. The, li the livelihood of hundreds of state employees and, the and their support families was at risk and so was mine. A very long story short, our plan won and we executed a business plan to cut costs and increase sales and five years later we finally ran a profitable business taking over eight million dollars of expense out of a 13 million dollar business. Today there's no financial burden on Minnesota state taxpayers. One of the key strategies we employed to sell the resource of inmate labor and production space to the private sector. That meant we had to take manufacturing from outside the walls, inside the walls. For some reason, we weren't allowed to bring 1,500 inmates into the community to produce product. The risks were high and the risks were many. I was told by Dennis Benson, the Deputy Commissioner of Corrections at the time, that if I could pull this plan off, I could basically name any job I wanted in the Minnesota Department of Corrections. I tucked that away. Several years later, I went back to Dennis and I told him I was ready to do something different. And with his mentoring, I became the next warden at Stillwater Prison. Stillwater Prison is the same prison that my greatest mentor of all, my dad, Chuck Faris, served as the captain of security for 23 years after serving 23 years as a Marine. The Faris name is now forever memorialized on a wall of the previous prison wardens in the warden's conference room. So I say, God is never early, God is never late, God is always right on time. Today I lead a number of manufacturing companies as a shareholder in France Corporation, serving as Chief Operations Officer. As it turns out, Dennis Franson of France Corporation was one of the first private business owners that we sold the resource of prison labor to while I was the CEO at MinCor. We struck up a great relationship. Dennis continues to mentor me today with his entrepreneurial spirit and leadership and wisdom. The tools of the trade that I've learned along the way, many of which came from within the walls of this fine university, and others learned from mentors and are still a work in process and a continuous improvement initiative, but nonetheless effective. As I reflect on my education and career, a couple of things are very clear to me. The first is I have to come to terms with the fact that I will never be the smartest person in the office. So I need to surround myself with people smarter than I. The second is good leaders are a direct result of excellent mentoring. I have a strong and long list of people that have helped shape and mentor me into the leader I try to be today. I thank God daily 
for leading them to me and ask him to continue to do so. Finally, I have one more homework assignment for you. Are you excited? Don't worry, it's a take home project and yes, you'll still get to pick up your diploma in a few minutes. Your assignment is to commit to the process of mentoring someone at all times. You can mentor more than one, but the minimum requirement is to mentor at least one at all times. Mentoring is simple, really. All you have to do is provide equal doses of why with how and pray for them daily. The how should evolve to simply providing options. They will quickly gain confidence and soon you will find that they are the ones mentoring you. Be deliberate in your mentoring and always demonstrate truth measured with grace. That's it, nothing more. The people that surround you will grade your work. God is never early, God is never late. God is always right on time. Congratulations, we are all God's masterpiece. <laughs>